Well, hello again. It's me, Penny. I live in Broadstairs, southeast of England, right on the sea, right on that little bit there. And um, I live with my husband, Pete, and my five chickens. And they're all well. Well, he's had a bad cold, but he's up and about and um, he's feeling much better. So that's good. That's always good, isn't it? So lovely to see you again. And if you're new here, thank you for joining. So as you know, this little video, I try and put it up on a Monday morning and it's going to be about things I've done in the past, things that are interesting me at the moment, things I want to do in the future and oh, a little bit from mom. Yes, she tells you about, uh, yeah. Well, we started off in 1949 um, when I was born and she's just talking now 50, 51, 52, I think she's got to 1952, just little snippets. And yeah, that's where it is this week. But then she did start when she was a little girl and she was born in 1926. And I thought next week I might start back there and then we can catch ourselves up and catch ourselves up with 1949. So I think that's my plan for next week to start when she was a little girl and see how different things were. This world is so different, isn't it? I mean, everything has changed. And our outlooks, I think we've changed as people. But I think we can learn a lot from how, well, last week, didn't she? She said, if we can accept things, the easier we can accept things, the better, you know, the better, better it is for us, the better we feel. I thought that was a very good piece of advice. And then... I'm going to put up a little film because although it feels like late September today, um, this week we've had some beautiful weather. Um, no rain, really. I just just said a shower Thursday night, but uh, Tuesday, Wednesday was two beautiful days. And so I walked around the lighthouse way on Tuesday and on Wednesday I walked into Townway. That's our two circular walks from our house. And so I put that little bit of film up at the end. So I hope you enjoy it. So I'm going to start this week because it's here on top of my pile with, well, let's talk about whips. If you're not a crafter, you don't know what whips are. But if you are a crafter, then you'll know and I'm sure you've got some because whips are work in progress. Now as a crafter we often talk about are you a process or a project and I used to be a project. I would do my projects, I would finish them and I would start a new one. Fair dues but now since lockdown I became a process. I enjoyed the process of it and because we were in lockdown I was crafting quite a lot more and I needed to change, you know, not knit, 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 and then not so, so, so. And so I needed to change and pick up different things. And of course, I was looking around a lot more and finding patterns. Oh, I'd like to do that. I'd like to do that. So I've got quite a few whips and that's what I'm working on at the moment. I'm not buying anything new until all my whips are finished. And one of my whips was a pattern that I bought because I so dearly want, I'm not, I'm not the kind of girl who knits toys. I do admire people who do it because believe me, it's not easy. And everyone you make is different because they take on a, a personality of their own. I'm realizing that. But I saw this little pattern and I sent off for it. Here it is, all put ready. And I so fell in love with it. It's Little Cotton Rabbits, it's Boy Mouse in a Cabled Sweater. And as you know, my ancestors come from Scotland and this little mouse somehow, well, I think he comes from Peterhead and I think he likes the ships and that around and that's where I'm imagining him from. So this was a whip 
that I wanted to, well, it was a pattern I'd bought and I thought, now come on, you can't just buy these patterns and not do them. So I started it this week. I've knitted this little cabled sweater. I mean, you can see why he's a little Scottish mouse. As, his per as he comes together, his personality will come and I will call him. My friend Heather sent me some, some names, suggestions for names. So when he's put together, I'll show you him. What I love about these trousers is I love the, the detailing, you know, the shaping and the little hole that we have to leave for his tail. Now, I've knitted the clothes first because I obviously felt less sure about knitting the little mouse but um, I'm going to knit that this week so hopefully next week you will see one of my whips finished and I think this is he's going to have Indy Dyer's wool this is Ellie of Craft House Magic's wool <laughs> so there we are so that's my little cotton mouse and um, I'm looking forward to knitting him so I think he'll make an appearance next week. So what I said I would show you as well was my quilt. Do you remember I bought the pattern and I'm going to put some pictures up here. I'll take some photographs because it's very very large and uh, you know it really fits nicely over a double bed but I'll just show you here close up so that you can see the fabric here I, you what you put a label on when you make things when you, it, quilters always put labels on their quilts and so that was the quilt that was the label I made for this quilt hand pieced and hand oh hand pieced and hand quilted pure wool wadding which is sublime sublime autumn 2018 and that's my name and so here it is as you can see tumbling blocks beautiful fabric the colors are exquisite I'll try and, sh shall I, shall I try and, ha I'll try, I'll try and um, stand up and show you. It can't really be done. However, I'll put some photos up. But I wanted you to see the fabric up close and how beautiful it is. The colours. So there we are. That's my cave facet quill. Oh, that wadding in wool it makes all the difference it's so light but so warm so what else was i going to talk about i know i um i came across this week prince charles prince charles in cracking bid to save the curlew and the curlew is one of my favorite birds we do get them here and I'm going to put a little bit of film up that I took of a curlew down by the seashore and they've got the most evocative sound oh if you hear a curlew uh, as you know, we go to Tresco and you hear the curlew there. It's absolutely gorgeous. Prince Charles took one of Britain's most threatened bird species under his wing yesterday when he oversaw the release of 11 curlew chicks. He's the same age as me and he's championed the birds and he's watched as the chicks were freed on the Queen's 
20,000 acre Sandringham estate in Norfolk. And what lucky birds they are. It's part of a unique relocation project to help restore the population. Around 80 chicks will be freed at Sandringham at near Kingsley and Wild Kale, Wild Ken Hill near Kingslyn. Others are going to a similar project in Dartmoor. They were hatched from eggs at eight RAF and civilian airfields. And uh, there their territorial behavior defending nests risked air safety and eggs were often destroyed on bases. It's the Europe's largest wading species and the UK has around a quarter of the world's 58,000 breeding pairs. But since 1970, their uh, population has declined due to loss of habitat. And Charles said yesterday, I've always cherished the evocative call of the curlew, but it's now dangerously close to being something that our grandchildren will never have the chance to enjoy. And he thanks so many people for helping him in the project. And there is a hat that uh, is trying to raise money, obviously, for the curlew. And I knitted it. Um, I knitted it at the beginning of lockdown, actually. And it's one of my favourite hats, and I wear it all the time, when the weather's chilly, obviously. And here it is. It's got that curlew on it. All the way round. It's lovely, isn't it? Well, I like it. Yeah. Bobble or no bobble. I went for the bobble in the end. And this is that uh, beautiful uh, Scottish two ply wool. It doesn't look too bad. Let's see, I'll turn round. What do you think? <laughs> Quite nice, isn't it? And if it helps the curlew, I'm all for that. I do suffer with my ears, so that comes right over and it's beautiful. Oh, is that the join? Well, I knitted it in the round. Nope. No. No. Eee. My little mouse will go well with that, won't it? Maybe I should knit one for him. <laughs> anyway, I think that's it for this week. So we've got a little film of Mum talking about Harlow. You've got um, a little film of us, uh, you know, for our couple of walks this week. The Tumbling Blocks Quilt. Now I'm going to, yes, the pattern I showed you last week with all the little pin tucks, I came across a pattern of a, a photo of me in it. Do you think I can find it for this? No, I can't. So maybe next week that'll be carried forward. And I'm going to talk next week about EPP, English paper piecing, because I've done quite a lot of it. Uh, there's, there's an example there behind me. And I'm going to talk about EPP and show you some EPP things I've done, English paper piecing. So until then, I'm going to sign out with a poem that my friend Heather has written. And um, let me see if I can get it up because I haven't got it printed out. She says she has a little poetry pixie and the poetry pixie tells her what to write and then she says the poetry pixie shoots off and uh, she hasn't got a word in her head but I don't accept that because I think that she writes them herself really. So this poem is called The New Carpet. I'm working in a carpet shop up at the retail park. I'm there from nine each morning until it's nearly dark. The shop just isn't busy the phone won't even ring. But a man came past the other day and I thought my luck was in. New carpet, please, his voice called out. Mine's old. I need a change. My wife has sent me up here for a look at your new range. How lovely, sir. Please let me help. Now, would you like to sit? We'll deliver it, then lay it and guarantee a perfect fit. Can I in 
interest you in a wool-based one, a long or shorter pile. We've lots of lovely colours, so you could be here a while. Now, where is most important? Do you have a family? Yes, there's me, the wife, mum and dad and the kids. It makes 23. And we're also fond of animals. In our house, there's quite a few. Please tell me more, I smiled at him. I love all creatures too. Well, we used to have a cobra, but it slithered, hissed and spat. So the zoo lent us their mongoose, and that put an end to that. The geese are happy in the bath, the swans they sometimes fight, but the basin's now unoccupied since the pelicans took flight. We have a pair of badgers. We named them Jack and Jill, but she had so many cubs this year, we've put her on the pill. They nested in the wardrobe, that spot we let them choose. Now they nearly have our hand off when we reach in for our shoes. The Tesco home delivery man, he won't come any more. The pack of wolves surrounded him when he arrived outside the door. He beat them back with French baguettes. It really took its toll until he managed to distract them with a jumbo sausage roll. We had a spot of bother with the hamster and a cable and I wouldn't like to tell you what the horse left on the table. The grass snake took a liking to our fraying kettle flex. Mum and Dad tripped on the tortoise twice and nearly broke their necks. The man next door was livid and he hammered on our wall. He'd found our missing scorpion while walking barefoot in his hall. There's no need for such language. Its sting would only ache. We all thought the meerkat ate it. It was a genuine mistake. The cows just had another calf. There's buckets full of milk and we've all got new pyjamas as the worms made loads of silk. The sawdust in the box room is getting really deep. It's halfway up the donkey. You can hardly see the sheep. But maybe I've been hasty. Our carpets aren't that bad. They might just need a hoover. They're not the worst we've had. A little spray of vanish and they'll be as good as new. I think instead I'll put this cash towards a highland coo. My head, it fell upon the desk. My shoulders drooped so low. My body language told him it was time for him to go. Why do you let them in the house? My voice began to harden. Wouldn't it be better if you kept them in the garden? He set off with a puzzled look towards the bargain mats. But no one has a garden living in the high-rise flats. I called out, try some lino, it's much easier to mop. We'll throw in some, some flora. But he'd already left the shop. Well done, Heather. It's fantastic. I really love it. I hope you do too. I think we come to the end, safe to say. I had a lovely visit with my brother this week. He came over from, uh, he lives in Southern Ireland with his family, uh, who I send my love to. And um, I'm in touch with his daughter who lives in LA, who I know is watching Chingwag. So I'll say a special hello to Anusha. And we had a lovely time self-distancing in the garden. The weather on Thursday was absolutely beautiful. So we were able to sit out there and, and I made some uh, leek and carrot pasties and, and some salad and a tray bake. And it just all went so lovely. So it was a thrill. So that's happened this week too. So now we've just got the couple of little films, one of mum, uh, as I've said, about Harlow, and then the next one about our walks. So I'll say cheerio, and I'll see you next week, all being well. Bye, have a lovely week. Thanks for watching. We left it before when we were chosen to, we were put on the list to go to Harlow Newtown and we <clears throat> we left Norton Road in our three uh, top floor flat where you ate the grape, yeah. ate the owner's grape and then we were recommended by somebody that Grandad knew to be put on the list to go to Harlow Newtown and we were chosen which was just like a dream, it was so 
gorgeous. Right. Lovely. Two bedrooms and a lovely kitchen. Yeah. With all the equipment in there. Lovely cupboards and and of course the serene the the scenery around was absolutely, absolutely lovely. lovely so here's the flats and we think I'm about three here. Yes. And I love my coat. I've got a royal family coat on, you know, a wool coat with 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 velvet collar. Oh, it's so yes. lovely. Yes. I don't know why I've got my hands up, but you see Harlow was just being yes. just literally being yes. built around you, wasn't yes, it, Mum? That's right. Yes. And this one I'm I'm putting my socks on. But what I love about this one is New settee, Mum. Yes. You didn't have settee, no. you said, or anything like that, no. you know. And if you look in the background, <coughs> you could see a cupboard with a set of encyclopedias, which I grew up with. I absolutely grew up with yes. those encyclopedias. I remember yes. them. I remember reading them all the time, looking at them. So here you've gone from this room with the, over the bath and all of that to owning a set of encyclopedias. Yes. Beautiful settee. Here I am looking over the balcony, standing on a stool. And I think yes. I was about three here. Yes. Yeah, I look it, don't I? I've always got a smile on my face, yes. Mum. Yes. You were a very happy child. You yeah. Were very happy. And here's the flat, because I went back in 2003, and so it was the top flat. And mum's climbed over those railings several yes. times, haven't you? Yes, because our neighbours were absolutely lovely neighbours, but they often forgot their key. Or their... Tell me how you got there, mum. Well, we, when I think of uh, what a big move it was and how much furniture we needed and what things we needed, I think we got must have got a lot of them on, on higher purchase. And we settled in there and we got to know our neighbours. But Dad um, then got to know the people below, which were a lovely couple. And he had organised himself with a lift with somebody who had a car who needed passengers to help him to, to uh, pay for the cost of running the car to London. And so there was Dad and this chap who lived underneath and he was always dressed ready to go to work in the city and he always carried a very lovely briefcase and we always wondered he never said what was in the briefcase we always assumed it was lots of important papers but one day when we got to know them better his wife said to me don't worry about his case there's no important papers in there there's just his sandwiches for lunch because oh. he's only a clerk he's <laughs> he doesn't oh he hasn't got a terrific terrific job in a big place in the city Sounds we just couldn't imagine having anywhere more beautiful to live mm. and it was in the country as well as as being a lovely mm. flat Mm. which was lovely. I wanted to thank Mum and it's so lovely that she's reminiscing and what lovely memories she had going from one one room uh, with no sink, no, you know, toilet downstairs to these three rooms upstairs, a small house, but at least she she had a, a somewhat of a kitchen, uh, as we know. The, the bit was over the bath and, oh dear, anyway. And here she is being moved to this beautiful flat in Harlow and how she talks about cupboards you know we just take cupboards for granted don't we but she said oh you know it was so special I had cupboards in the kitchen and how lovely it must have been for her to have a, a two and a half year old and to be in the countryside and in this beautiful new flat so yeah so I'll leave it there and now I'm going to put up uh, a li the little film from from this week so this is goodbye bye Thank you.